I don't think it was something that he saw coming. Maybe thinking like I was thinking, the Kyogre might be the thing that Max <laughs> is there potentially. Yeah, exactly. There were so many changes there and I really did like to see the Dynamax Tornadus. I think the synergy was fantastic going for that Max Airstream because you could click Tailwind and get the speed up, but then you're not dealing any damage. And I think being able to utilize the fact that Tornadus was speedier, you can get the Airstream boost and still deal a decent chunk means you can help out your buddy Kyogre. And I really, really like to see that play there from Jonathan. I think the other thing to mention is they've just played game nine today, <laughs> technically. Um, and we're going to be going into a game 10 in a way. It's like double digits of a Pokemon game. You never would normally get to see this and I I simply can't wait so I think Lee we should jump right into another game one in this best of five set and remember the winner of this best of five will be your champion of the Pokemon Players Cup 3 this is it Leonardo is going to be bringing out a Venusaur and Char um yeah Venusaur and Charizard coming out there and Venusaur <laughs> and Incineroar on Jonathan's side two Venusaurs very confusing <laughs> yeah and it's a nice adjustment here from Leonardo because it gives you a lot of flexibility this lead because you you've got the option to switch out Charizard get the Groudon onto the field or switch the Venusaur out and uh, get the Groudon out and that side and then take advantage of either of these Pokemon the Charizard which gets its solar power or the Venusaur which gets its chlorophyll ability uh, Jonathan going with a nice steady lead as well with the Venusaur going to be able to potentially go for Max God like we've seen him do just stall out those Gigantamax turns from the opposite side of the field and the Incineroar a big player here because that parting shot has been so invaluable to him but this is something that Leonardo is aware of so he has to be very careful with allowing that parting shot to go off because it does slow him down and it prevents him from really building the momentum that he's going to need to kind of carry him through this match. Yeah, I like this here from Jonathan. Going back to plan A that, you know, got him those wins earlier on in um, those previous best of fives. The Venusaur and the Incineroar being able to apply pressure with the fake out and that parting shot critically. Not going to be bringing um, that tor Tornadus and Kyogre lead quite yet. But we obviously, the Dynamax come out here from Jonathan. And if it's going to be that Venusaur, I really like the situation here because you can apply a lot of pressure down onto that opposing Groudon that has just switched in. If you may be able to catch it with the um, Vine Lash, particularly as Groudon's now on the field, the sun is in the sky, the chlorophyll ability is going to be activated. But you have to be careful because then solar power will be activated on that Charizard as well. Yeah, and that's the big problem. If you attack into the Groudon here, yes, you may be able to get rid of it and you start your residual damage, but at what cost? You're going to lose your Venusaur to the Charizard because it's kind of sitting open now for Leonardo to really take advantage of his Charizard. The sun is up and he's going to be able to remove one thing that really does, you know, take advantage of the sun that Jonathan's got uh, available to him. Yeah, well, Incineroar is going to go for the fake out here down into um, what was previously the Venusaur instead of going into the Groudon and, you know, obviously trying to break the Focus Sash that was on the Venusaur in that slot. Damage is going to come down though, however, into that opposing Groudon. It's going to be able to just, you know, eat its berry a little bit. Of course, the double target down, really trying to pick up the KO against the Groudon on Leonardo's side, but to no avail as it is now a Groudon. Charizard going to be able to capitalize on this and go for the max airstream. Huge damage going down into that Incineroar. You can really see when it doesn't have a special attack, reduce the offensive pressure that it can deal out. Yeah, the the, 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 the solar power just elevates ground on, uh, Charizard to another level, especially when you combine it with that life orb item that the uh, Charizard's holding for Leonardo. And um, given the speed boosts, which is really important from here because then it puts you in a, a better position, especially going into the next turn. If you do see something like the Tornadoes come onto the field for Jonathan, then you've got the freedom to go for another Airstream. Even though you know about the Cobra Berry on the Venusaur, you can opt to go for that. You can opt to go for a, a G-Max Blast Burn into the Tornadoes if you see you come onto the field. Or if you're Jonathan as well, you may want to go down a route where you get Kyogre onto the field, but then you're kind of stuck a bit because you don't want to be really switching Kyogre out into Tornadoes, which you're going to probably have to do if you want to kind of dictate the weather going forward in this match. So Tornadoes feels like maybe the better option here but jonathan going with that kyogre just to get rid of that that sun boost this initial turn for the charizard i mean you're right lee it was certainly a difficult decision which pokemons you want to bring into this situation you can see jonathan really running down the clock a little bit there in those last couple of seconds but has opted to go for that kyogre just change the weather over and of course with charizard being gigantamax it can't reset the weather with any of those fire type moves it's not going to be able to use a max flare for example and if Leonardo wants to get the weather back on his side, he's going to have to switch the Groudon out and back in. Yeah, and you know, the one thing that Kyogre does provide is a little bit more protection for that Venusaur and allows Jonathan to really utilize maybe the, the G-Max Vine Lash, which we see him getting here, and it allows him to potentially get this, this uh, the residual damage started on Leonardo's side of the field, which is invaluable, you know? 
Is the mm -hmm. Kyogre going to be able to take a, a double up from the Charizard and the Groudon? You've got to keep in mind that if the Charizard goes for another airstream here into the Kyogre, then the Groudon's 100% going to be able to get Precipice Blades off. But Leonardo wants to preserve that and the weather for later on in this game. Yeah, Venusaur is going to join the field here for Leonardo, just switching out the Groudon so it can come back in later. And Charizard going to max guard, so it's going to be protected until Groudon is able to help it out on the field a little bit later on. We are going to see, however, the um, Water Spout come out, targeting down, going to connect down into that opposing Venusaur, do a decent chunk of damage as the Vine Lash does come out as well. And Venusaur going to be able to take that much better than the opposing Groudon would. But I think the critical thing here is just getting that residual damage as well on the field. Yeah, and now, you know, Charizard, on Leonardo's side, he's kind of, he almost forced to go for the G-Max Wildfire here to start that residual damage if he values it. But at the same time, you're getting your Groudon onto the field. And do you go for the G-Max Wildfire into the Kyogre just to reduce the power of potentially a water spout? Uh, because you, we've seen it time and time again where the Groudon switches in on the Kyogre at full health and it takes so much damage. And you're not only switching in in front of a Kyogre now, you're switching in um, alongside a Venusaur that's probably going to be able to take maybe an attack, well it'll take an Airstream but it will, uh, probably won't be able to take a Sun Boosted Blast Burn but it's so easy here for Jonathan just to go for this Max Guard this turn and maybe click the Water Spout or Origin Pulse button. Yeah, that's very true. And Groudon going to rejoin the field, though, to try and reduce the damage from those water-type attacks. But Jonathan not going to be letting Kyogre operate in the sun. It's going to be returning to its Pokeball, and Tornadus is going to join the field here. Venusaur going to be able to go for that Max Ooze, and of course boost up Tornadus and the Venusaur by plus one on the special attack side at the end of this turn. But whether or not the Charizard's got something to say about it in the sun, it might be able to pick up a cheeky KO against either one of Jonathan's Pokemon here. It all depends who the Charizard has decided to target. With this powerful Max Airstream, it's going to target down into that Tornadus and pick up a solid KO, so Jonathan doesn't have the option to utilize anything such as Tailwind in this game. No, no Tailwind now, which is a, a, a really plays more into Leonardo's side, you know, he preferably doesn't want to have to contend with that and getting rid of the Tornadus there. He kind of sacrifices the fact that he's not really got his G-Max Blast Burn onto the field, um, but at the same time, taking away Tailwind, which is the one thing that Jonathan relies on quite heavily to try and close these matches out and, and support his Kyogre. It's a really valuable thing to to get out of this turn. And the Charizard, you've got to remember now, is, is still plus two. So it's going to be able to outspeed the Venusaur this next turn and still put a lot of pressure onto it, even with the rain up. But you probably want to protect your Charizard this next turn, get your Groudon off the field, maybe bring Venusaur back in, sacrifice that get to get your Groudon back out onto the field. And, you know, once you've got that weather control, it, it becomes a lot easier for Leonardo. And we still haven't seen the fourth Pokemon that Leonardo's brought to this set yet. Yeah, I really wouldn't be surprised to see Leonardo do the same strategy we just saw him do to reset the weather. Protect Charizard, switch out Groudon, maybe sacrifice something, but bringing the Groudon back into Charizard can utilize the sun with the solar power. The fact that it's got that those airstream boosts as well, as long as Charizard's on the field, it's going to be able to keep that in play. And Leonardo just retracting the Groudon in place of that Venusaur once again. And, you know, Venusaur, it can take a few attacks from the opposing Venusaur um, and Charizard quite wisely protecting. So I really like this methodical play coming out here from Leonardo. He knows exactly what he wants to be able to do here. Kyogre is going to go for the Origin Pulse, is going to be able to find its mark in the rain onto that opposing um, Venusaur here. But of course, even if you're able to pick up the KO on that Venusaur, which the Kyogre has been able to do, it only gives Leonardo the very free switch back into Groudon at the beginning of the next turn. And Venusaur just going for a Sludge Bomb to no avail here. Yeah, and now the Venusaur on Jonathan's side of the field in a, a little bit of an awkward spot. You know, the, the, you're going to be able to get your, your Groudon onto the field if you are Leonardo, which disrupts the weather. Of course, it puts it into your favor. It means the Venusaur is going to be a bit more pressure going into this turn. But again, the, the, the Kyogre's not in a terrible spot here because it can just click that Origin Pulse button. And with, with, with how low the Charizard is and the Groudon on Leonardo's side of the field, they're likely, even in the sun, to go down to one Origin Pulse hitting here for Jonathan. Yeah, if the Origin Pulse is able to connect, that's always the risk that I dread when I click that button myself. And Groudon here just going to go straight up for the Protect as Charizard does go for the Heat Wave here. Does manage to connect on both Pokemon, of course. Picks up a solid KO against the Venusaur. Super effective in Sun, Life Orb, Solar Power. You can just keep listing them off. It's going to deal huge, huge damage. <laughs> but Kyogre, very happy to be able to take that and can retaliate with that Water Spout. Of course, not connecting onto the Groudon, but Charizard with the really low HP that it's at. Um, ooh, is not going to be able to survive that at all, even in the Sun. No, but I think what Leonardo's done here is, is really nice because if the, the final Pokemon that he's got access to is that Regieleki, we know it can come in and uh, it's going to be able to make 
quick work of that Kyogre now without Tailwind support as well and there's the Sun just boosting it even further so Leonardo really utilizing the Charizard and the Venusaur combination here extremely well in this first game. Yeah Red Lecky, definitely the Pokemon that Jonathan doesn't want to see and you can see he's you know, locked in the forefoot very quickly there, knowing there isn't a way out for Kyogre here. So Leonardo is going to be able to take game one in this final best of five. And the one thing I love to see is the way that Leonardo is able to play so well with just three Pokemon. Um, you know, having the Groud on there and the Charizard and the Venusaur and just saving that Regieleki in the back. And it's got to be a constant threat. Astrous damage to the Tornadoes, even if it's in its max form. So, that you know, the options there are very difficult. And I think that's why Leonardo's kind of split in decision, making mm -hmm. it very difficult for Jonathan to make a decision on which what he wants to go with and it really comes back to how well he adapts to that lead coming into this next game yeah it's a really awkward 50 50 for our players there depending on what pokemon they're facing down so let's jump into game two remember leonardo is one game up here in our final best of five but jonathan we've seen make adaptations in the past to be able to make a strong comeback so let's see what happens leonardo leading up once again with that venusaur and charizard lead and jonathan making the adjustment for that kyogre and tornadus yeah, so I mean it's better than the previous game for Jonathan here because you do have options like we've just talked about where you can go for the, the max with the Tornadoes here or you can potentially just go for a Tailwind um, and just click the Water Spout button or you can even go for um, the, the, the Dynamax with the Kyogre. The problem is though, of course, if that Venusaur is the Pokemon that stays on the field and you don't attack into it and then the Groudon makes an appearance like we are seeing here for Leonardo. Yeah, let's see what's happening here. Leonardo does bring in the Groudon. Venusaur is going to be very happy about this. And of course, we've got to remember that Venusaur on Leonardo's side does have the Focus Sash. No Dynamax, however, in turn one. That's an ad adaptation from our players so far. We do see the Tailwind and we also see this Sleep Powder. So maybe going back to basics a little bit here. In the Winner's Finals game, we saw a lot of Sleep going around and we haven't seen too much so far. But Venusaur changing it up, connecting on that Tornadoes as the Water Spout does come off. Huge damage to that opposing Groudon and critically breaking the focus sash on that opposing Venusaur but I think really nice from Leonardo here to be able to just shut down that Tornadus. Yeah it's a really nice uh, option there from him to just make sure that it's not a threat going forward now you know if you're going to go for the Tailwind I'm going to put you to sleep. It is a little bit risky because it obviously can miss but it pays off like it has done. It really gives you a lot more flexibility going into this turn because yes you can if you're Jonathan go for the, the, the Dynamax on the Kyogre but at the same time it's so easy now for Leonardo to not be pressured by the Tornadus like you maybe were the previous turn and just go for the, the Gigantamax yourself and get some big damage onto the Kyogre in return. Yeah, I mean, the Tornadus is guaranteed to take one turn of sleep here. So um, Jonathan is going to be stuck with it here on the field. The Kyogre is going to switch out, though, in place for the Incineroar. And I like this. You can throw the Intimidate down onto the opposing Groudon. And of course, Incineroar is not going to be able to be put to sleep by that opposing Venusaur, thanks to the safety goggles item. Groudon, however, is going to get out of the way as well for Leonardo, as Charizard's going to join the field. So Leonardo's got himself in a nice position where both his Pokemon that benefit from the sun being in the sky are on the field. Tornadus is going to take that first turn of sleep as Venusaur goes for the weather ball so going to be firing down this fire attack into the opposing tornadoes does about over 50 percent there and charizard are just going to take its chip from solar power from just being here on the field yeah but a great turn here for for leonardo really concentrating down onto the tornadoes and making sure that you know if i've got the room to get rid of it i am removing it from play because i don't want to have to contend with another tailwind in this match like you know he, he shut that down so well in, in the previous game so doing it in this one as well with the sleep powder and then the combination of attacks really opens things up for him to uh, have a kind of similar end to this game like he did in game in game one and the problem is now you can always switch into to the, the Kyogre but uh, it's really difficult switching it in like we've said before into the Venusaur um, and it does weaken the Charizard but do you really want to take that Airstream damage so you're really trying to utilize the Incineroar now to get that parting shot which you desperately need on to maybe something like the Charizard here. Yeah, so many options there for that Incineroar. Does it go for Fake Out? Does it try and get a Flare Blitz in the sun? Maybe down onto that Venusaur with a Broken Focus Sash, try and pick up a cheeky KO. Or it can always go for that Parting Shot and reduce some of the special attack on the opposing side of the field. But we have yet to see what the Incineroar's gone for as the Charizard does go for its Gigantamax. So Leonardo locking this in, wanting to be able to fire off maybe a powerful Max Airstream here, try and pick up a KO against that opposing Incineroar and obviously get the speed boosted up on Leonardo's side as well. Tornado's still going to be taking a little bit of a nap here. I mean, 
and it's worked hard throughout this grand final so far, as Incineroar does go for the Darkest Lariat. So not going to be being able to pick up a KO by any means, but could potentially put Charizard in range of a Water Spout a little bit later on. For its troubles though, Incineroar is going to be KO'd by that very powerful Max Airstream, and Reggie Alecki already delighted to be here, but even happier with a speed boost. Yeah, and that's so big for Leonardo now, you know, getting that speed boost onto the Reggie Lecky kind of puts it out of the way of those tailwinds on Jonathan's side of the field. So even if that Tornadus does wake up and manage to get through this next turn, which it's very unlikely to do, just because of the threat that's now on the field for Leonardo, it, it, it's not going to worry too much when the Kyogre comes onto the field in the tailwind because it knows it's going to be able to outspeed it. So a really nice play from Leonardo, making it very difficult for Jonathan to really utilize his Pokemon as he wants to in this game. And you know, you, you had to really leave the Incineroar out on the field there. If you're Jonathan, you look at what he's got on the back. He's got the Venusaur and the Kyogre. So it's an easy target for Leonardo here to go for that airstream into that slot knowing well if the Kyogre comes in yes I lose my solar power but I'm still going to get some really significant damage onto it get the speed boost which is going to benefit my Regilecki and if the Venusaur comes in yeah well the Cobra Berry will protect you so much but not so much if you're not in that Gigantamax stage. Yep, that's very true. You need that HP boost that you get doubled when you go into your Gigantamax to really be able to start taking some of these powerful attacks that we know Charizard and Regieleki are capable of dealing out. Um, interesting state of affairs though, like the weather has now changed up. We've got the rain on the field, but Regieleki is still looking very strong in the face of both of these Pokemon that Regieleki loves to deal good damage to. Yeah, and you know, now we are seeing Jonathan um, kind of hoping that we get the wake up now with the Tornadus as he does go for the Dynamax into the Tornadus um, going for the Airstream because hoping this the, 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 the Tornadus is going to be able to outspeed in the Tailwind which it should be able to get that uh, Airstream boost onto the Kyogre and then when you combine that with the Tailwind it probably just puts it ahead of the Regieleki and the Charizard in the rain you're going to be able to potentially pick up a knockout but it relies on the, the Tornadus waking up here so it's a big gamble here from Jonathan yeah, things do get intense. It is Grand Finals. These things are going to be coming right down to the wire. Not only does Tornadus have to wake up, but it then critically has to be able to get that KO as well. Otherwise, Jonathan is going to be in a really precarious situation going forward in the rest of this match. So let's see if Tornadus is going to be able to wake up in this particular match. Charizard going straight away for the max guard, however, so not going to be taking any damage this turn. Regieleki gets out of there with oh. the ball switch and picks up the KO with a critical hit. Poor Jonathan there, you know, not only do we not get to see if it wakes up, but the Dynamax is gone before Jonathan's even able to utilize it. Yeah, you, you know, just showing how incredibly useful that one max airstream from the Charizard was here, allowing Leonardo to preserve the Reggie Alecki, uh, keep it in the back, and then bring in potentially the Groudon if he wanted to, or the Venusaur that we know can soak up these these uh, big, powerful water spouts a lot better than anything else that he's got access to on his team. Yep, Charizard not taking the Water Spout. Venusaur is, however, going to take it. Does huge damage and picks wow. up the KO. Yeah. Um, so Venusaur is going to leave us. But, you know, Leonardo does have the utility in the back as well. You've got the Groudon to reset up that weather. And you've also got the Regieleki to apply that offensive pressure. And Jonathan doesn't have the luxury anymore being down to the last two Pokemon to be able to switch out that Kyogre and reset the weather. No, no, no dictation here from him for the weather control at all in Leonardo's side of the field now. Um, it, and, and losing the Tornadus like that, it, it means you've not got access any longer to your Dynamax. Really unfortunate turn from here, getting punished like that with the Tornadus. The Regieleki just doing so much work here um, and making it very difficult as we go into the final turn where this Gigantamax Charizard is going to be able to have the pick of the targets on Jonathan's side of the field. You know, the, the Venusaur is an easy one. You know there's no protect there. And, you know, it doesn't hurt going into the, the, um, the Kyogre either, but there's more likely a protect coming out from that side. But, you know, it's going to be very difficult for Jonathan to kind of claw this one back. Maybe Sleep Powder onto something like the Regieleki if you protect uh, your Kyogre could could help you here, but it's it, it's a, it's very it's going to be very difficult to kind of pull back from this position that Leonardo set up for himself. I mean, the speed could be interesting here. Venusaur will be speedy in sun and goes for that Sleep Powder going first into that Charizard and putting that big threat to sleep is really nice for Jonathan, particularly if this Kyogre is going for that powerful water type move, going for that Origin Pulse, find this mark on both these Pokemon and even then the Sun able to get a KO on that opposing Groudon putting that Charizard in such range of being KO'd on this next turn and particularly as we've seen that this Venusaur is super speedy the Sun is in the sky as well Charizard's not going to hang around for long 
Yeah, and now uh, the tables completely flipped there for Jonathan with that, the, you know, getting the Charizard onto the field really benefited him there because it, it meant that the, the chlorophyll activated allowed <laughs> him to actually outspeed the Charizard, that situation. And now, you know, it looks like Jonathan's going to be able to tie this one up now with uh, the Regieleki coming out into the field. Uh, it hasn't got that speed boost anymore. Is Venusaur going to be able to get the Sleep Powder onto it? That's what you're kind of hoping for. Um, or do you expect the Regieleki to protect here? Um, I don't know if the Regieleki is going to be able to pick up the knockout onto the Kyogre. I don't know if we've seen the calculation onto a full health Kyogre here. So there may be an option for, you know, Jonathan to go for a Sludge Bomb into the Charizard and just click the Origin Pulse. I'll be a bit more pragmatic and just protect here while the Venusaur deals with the uh, the Charizard, which is an easy turn because the Charizard is um, more than likely going to take a turn of sleep. There is a possibility it does wake up though. Yeah, I mean, Charizard goes down anyway thanks to its solar power at the end of this turn, but whether it can wake up in time to maybe deal some damage out, we'll have to see. Um, not gonna be able to get a KO from Regieleki, it does go for the Electroweb on the Venusaur and the Kyogre though, maybe putting Charizard in range to wake up, but no, it does not, it is still sleeping, so we'll be KO'd at the end of this turn, and Venusaur free and safe to go for a Sludge Bomb straight into it, doesn't want to risk anything, like it waking up, um, obviously it couldn't, the speeds had changed anyway, but just a nice play from Jonathan here. Unfortunately, Regieleki does dive out of the way of Kyogre's attack. Yeah, and uh Let's to see another turn here <laughs> as we go into it. But you know, the Venusaur in a, in a, is still in a, a great spot where it can just get n nice, consistent damage onto the Regieleki. And it's, it's such a good health point as well. The Regieleki is going to really struggle to, to knock it out. And you know, it can go for the Electro Webs, but probably not going to be enough to take both things out in one fell swoop. Yeah, it goes into the Venusaur, and you can see Venusaur really being able to risk, um, resist these electric-type attacks coming out from the Regieleki. The Weather Ball is going to go and find its mark, not be quite enough to pick up a KO, but Kyogre this time finding its mark with that Origin Pulse and connecting onto the opposing Regieleki. So Jonathan able to take back a game here, and in its final best of five, we are seeing one game apiece at the moment between Jonathan and Leonardo. Yeah, really nice comeback there for Jonathan in, in a position where you kind of thought, oh, it doesn't look too good for you. And he, you know, takes a full advantage of Leonardo bringing in the ground on it, probably the wrong time for mm -hmm. him. Um, even though, you know, it was helping him deal with the Kyogre threat as well. <laughs> but really, you know, that's the beauty about having Kyogre and the Venusaur. If the sun comes out, which is the automatic kind of disruption for the rain, then you take full advantage from that. Then things go quite quickly downhill from you. Yeah, speed control and sleep control, I think, are definitely critical in this grand final. So let's jump into our next match and see who's going to be able to sort of nip out into the lead a little bit in this best of five set in the grand finals. We've got Venus and Charizard once again to Leonardo, so he's really sticking with this particular lead in this final set. Tornadus and Incineroar, however, being the options for Jonathan. Yeah, and this this is a, a nicer lead for Jonathan, you know, it does give him a few more options where you've potentially got a fake out into the Venusaur or the Charizard, um, and you've got that instant tailwind to take advantage of. And you've also got the option where if you want to with the, the Incineroar, you can go for a parting shot here and then pivot into something like the Kyogre. Um, the overwrites any switch to potentially Groudon from Leonardo's side of the field. Um, the, the only problem that you'd have to worry about is maybe the Charizard uh, going for the Max Airstream here uh, into, you know, getting the Groudon onto the field for the Venusaur, Max and the Charizard going for the Airstream into the Incineroar. But the mm -hmm. one thing that Jonathan can rely on, he's seen in previous games, if you've got that Tailwind in effect, the Incineroar does outspeed the Charizard. Yeah, the speed control is critical here. And Leonardo making an adjustment, bringing that Regieleki into play so that it can apply some electric type damage into the opposing Thunderous and also maybe try and change the speed up a little bit um, with those electro webs that we saw towards the end of the previous game as well. But in contrast to the previous game, we're back to Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing our Pokemon very early on here in this Grand Finals. And Leonardo has opted to go for that with the Charizard once again. And like you said, Lee, lots of options here, particularly with that powerful Max Airstream down into the opposing Incineroar. But Tornadus has gone for the Tailwind, so Incineroar is going to have a little bit of speed behind it going into this next turn. And it goes for the Flare Blitz here. We haven't really seen the Incineroar go on the offensive as of yet. Straight into that Regieleki, wow. not enough to pick up a KO, however, but huge, huge damage. And poor Regieleki, you know, coming in and taking a big hit in return. Tornadus is also going to have to take a powerful hit from that Max Airstream. And, you know, Charizard able to get the KO here, but I think you've got to be careful as well that the Tailwind is up on Jonathan's side of the field, and he now has a free switch into a Pokemon from the back. Yeah, but the problem is the, the Regieleki getting that speed boost as well. We've seen how important that can be for Leonardo mm. to take advantage and pressure things like the, the Tornadus and the Kyogre, which are both 
you know, going to be able to outspeed. Um, and you can't really bring in your Venusaur here because in front of the Charizard, I mean, you're going to be forced into that similar play where you kind of have to go for uh, the Max Guard with Venusaur, then the parting shot into the Charizard. But the problem with that is now that you're, well, the Incineroar, it's not a problem. Without the, the Airstream, it would have been a problem because then you, mm -hmm. your Incineroar will be moving before it, but now kind of falling a bit more into Jonathan's favor where uh, the Incineroar will be the last thing to exit the field again after that Airstream. Yeah, that's the thing. The speed can be manipulated in so many different ways, whether it's through the Tailwind or whether it's through these max Airstreams. And I think you're quite right there, Lee. It was really critical of the Charizard to be able to get that boost up because now no matter what Jonathan brings in, there's no sun on the field at the moment. So Venusaur's not going to get that boost. The Charizard and Regieleki are going to be primed to deal out some big damage. Yeah, and you know, you you ne in a weather war, you never want to be the first player to bring your weather onto the field unless you're going to be able to really capitalize off it because it, especially when you're down a Pokemon because it really limits your options to be able to kind of switch out to get that weather back in. So, you know, Leonardo are in a better position um, in theory where he's going to be able to um, change the weather up a bit easier than what Jonathan may be able to do after losing that tornado stuff this turn. Yeah, you're right. As soon as you bring the weather into play, you've kind of thrown the challenge gauntlet down a little bit to have it overridden. Um, so it's interesting, it hasn't come into play as of yet. Jonathan going for the Max Guard once again onto that Venusaur. As Red Hialeki goes for the Electra Web. Going to be able to connect onto that opposing Incineroar. Obviously lower the speed and take it down to below 50% damage here. Um, but I want to see what this Charizard is going to get up to. It goes for the Max Airstream. Going to be able to connect onto that opposing Incineroar and remove it from play before Incineroar is able to go for any more damage with the Flare Blitz or even that parting shot that we've seen be so detrimental to the Charizard previously. Yeah, really targeting into that that one slot that you know is going to be the free one because there's no protect there from, from Jonathan's side of the field, whereas you have seen the Max Guard countless times from the mm -hmm. Venusaur already. So, you know, taking advantage of that. If the Kyogre may be switched in there, then you just get a knockout, probably with the Electro Web combination with that Airstream. And all the time you're putting yourself and your Regieleki into a great position, especially now that it is only the Kyogre and that Venusaur left on the field. Now, the rain will come up for the Kyogre, but then you've got a really great switch into Groudon if you're your Leonardo mm -hmm. to go for the G-Max Blast Burn into the Venusaur. You've got the plus two, so you don't really mind about the, the Chlorophyll ability activating on the Venusaur and because it is in its Gigantamax form, you're not so worried about the potential Sleep Powder that came out in that previous set. Yeah, that's very true. It's a really dominant start in this game coming out here from Leonardo. The Charizard really is in a great position. Even though the rain is on the field now with the Kyogre, like you said, you can just switch in the Groudon from the back, and then Charizard's in a great position to go for that powerful G-Max Wildfire and you know deal huge damage to the Venusaur. It means that you work around the Cobra Berry by not going for the Max Airstream, and then you can get that residual damage chipping away at the Kyogre as well. Yeah, you could even choose the Kyogre this this turn around, but it makes more sense to go after the Venusaur, I feel, because, you know, the Venusaur is the one thing on the field that can uh, potentially boost the special attack power of the Kyogre, which makes it even more threatening, even in the sun. And um, the, the last turn, Max Guarding, it's kind of an easy target now for Leonardo just to go after, it's a safe one, just get the G-Max Wildfire off onto it, remove it from the field, and then you've still got Regieleki in the back that you can bring in at a later point um, once that residual damage is taking a little effect on the Kyogre to kind of clean up the game. Yep, Groudon's going to join the field and set the sun up. Kyogre just going to protect here, doesn't want to take any damage from this opposing Charizard. And Charizard, oh, it's actually the Venusaur moving first here with that Max Flare, targeting down into the opposing Charizard, but Charizard not going to mind taking these fire type attacks. It's not very effective, does minimal damage. And in return, the Charizard is able to go for that Max Airstream and connect down onto the opposing Kyogre. I think something is interesting as well, if that had potentially been kind of the weather ball um, turning off in the rain that could easily have been a max geyser and that's something that the charizard wouldn't have appreciated so a great switch in there from leonardo bringing in the ground on yeah just being aware that that could have been a possibility you know just covering all bases here just boosting the charizard making sure that you're weakening the the kyogre and that's probably why we saw the target into the kyogre there because just in case we did see the kyogre try to get an attack off um you're you're weakening it to the point where the water spout's not really going to be that significant um going on to either the charizard or the ground on Groudon going on the defensive here, just protecting itself, particularly in the face of a Gigantamax Venusaur with access to G-Max Vine Lash. That's exactly what Jonathan has opted to go for into that slot. Still does a decent chunk through the Protect, and of course the residual damage is going to be now here on the field, going down against Leonardo's side. Charizard is going to utilize that Blast Gun though, connects down onto the opposing Kyogre, and is able to pick up the solid KO. Not something you see every day, a Fire-type move picking up big damage against 
the Kyogre, but you know, Charizard's got all the boosts it needs here with its ability, with its item, with the weather. It's sitting very, very happy on the field. And even though it now does have to take that turn to recharge after the blast burn, Leonardo has all the opportunities here to face down against Jonathan's lonely Venusaur on the field. Yeah, but the, you know, the, the Venusaur's still in a good position now this next turn. Potentially going to be able to take an attack from the Groudon. Uh, you're going to be able to remove the Charizard from the field. You don't really fear the Regilecki too much. Now, you could take take advantage of, of the position where you go after the Groudon here because you know the recharge turn from the Charizard. But um, it looks like we are just going to see Jonathan forfeit that one. Not in a, a, a great position, one Pokemon against the, the entire kind of giving you that additional protection, which is going to be so valuable against so, such big hitters on uh, Leonardo's side of the field. That's very true. And we've got game of four to jump into now between Jonathan and Leonardo. And don't forget, Leonardo is potentially one game away from being your Players Cup 3 champion. But Jonathan is going to do everything he can to try and stop that from happening. And speak of the Pokemon, Lee, we've got Grimmsnarl and Venusaur as the adaptation for Jonathan facing down against the lead that Leonardo has stuck with, that Charizard and Venusaur. Yeah, I, I, it's a, a little bit of a coincidence that this has happened when the Grim Snarls come out here, but it does make sense, you know, it does with the, the, the screen support that Jonathan's got access to, it does give him that just little bit of security against something like these big attacks that we are seeing. Uh, you know, the Spirit Break as well that we know is on that Grim Snarl, very useful uh, in the same respect of how um, the, the Snarl from the, the, the Umbreon on Leonardo's side is, is very useful, you know, reducing that special attack damage. So furthering the defensive capabilities of your team, allowing you to take these big attacks turn after turn and get your strategy set up rather than kind of just getting knocked out after knockout after knockout. Yeah, I mean, talking about strategy and big damage and knockouts, Charizard has certainly been a key Pokemon for Leonardo and no surprise to see it Gigantamax up once again, particularly when you're facing down against that Venusaur, you want to maybe try and apply some pressure. And Jonathan, once again, going for the Gigantamax here on his side of the field. And I think it's great to see these players kind of bringing the same strategies, but I like seeing the adaptations that maybe can sway a game in their favor. Jonathan bringing in that Grim Snarl. I want to see what it's going to be able to do to support this Venusaur a little bit further, maybe where Incineroar was falling short in these last couple of games. Grim Snarl will be able to pick up the slack. And going for the light screen is certainly a great way to do this when you're in the face of two special attackers here. Just going to boost up the special defense on Jonathan's side of the field. Charizard is going to go straight away for that G-Max Wildfire into the Venusaur. And you can see the light screen really paying off here. Venusaur going to be able to take that reasonably well. Residual damage of course coming into play but Venusaur on Leonardo's side gonna oh. go for the sleep powder and it misses Venusaur on Jonathan's side able to go for that max ooze into the Charizard doing a little bit of damage but critically of course boosting up its own special attack but the issue here is that Charizard was moving first yeah, and that's the problem going into this next turn, especially with the, the residual damage from the G-Max Wildfire set up now from Leonardo's side of the field. And it's all well and good getting the light screen up, but the problem is it does leave Grimmsnarl a little bit of a city target for that sleep powder and for potentially a double up this next turn. Whereas, you know, the Venusaur is, is almost forced on, on Jonathan's side to go for the Max Guard. I mean, he could be quite like bold in this position to go for another attack but you aren't going to be knocking out the Charizard and at best you're going to take the opposing Venusaur down to its sash so you're not getting a massive return if you do risk the Venusaur here so it's probably better in all accounts to try and, and preserve it a little bit here. Maybe you could go for a, a Spirit Break into the opposing Charizard but it doesn't really improve your situation going into the following turn where you'd, you'd be more than likely in, the, in a similar situation again. Yeah and it certainly doesn't stop that Venusaur for going for more sleep powders in the future here. Grimmsnarl is going to go for that Sucker Punch though, get a little bit more damage onto that opposing Charizard. But Charizard going to go for that Max Airstream, targeting me down into the Grimmsnarl. You know, it didn't manage to fall asleep in that previous turn, so it's going to have to take some more damage, particularly as it has Sucker Punch the Charizard. It's not very happy about that at all. And I think getting the speed boost up on Leonardo's side as well is something critical we've seen him do as a strategy in these past few games. Earth Power coming up from the Venusaur on Leonardo's side as well, connecting into Grimmsnarl. Just going to do a little bit of damage. Venusaur, however, on Jonathan's side, the G Max Fine Lash is going to go down into that Charizard. And although it's not dealing a huge amount of damage, that residual damage is now going to come into effect. Yeah, and a really bold play here by Jonathan, you know, kind of from suspecting that from his previous plays that, that Leonardo might just go down into the safe target of Grimmsnarl here thinking that potentially that, that G-Max, uh, the Max Guard was going to come out here but taking advantage of the room that was allowed him there and getting the, the G-Max Vine Lash off which is so huge to just get that residual damage started on Leonardo's side of the field and now you know Jonathan in a position where he can 
protect his Venusaur this last turn and let the Grim Snarl go down because it will go down to the G Max Wildfire residual damage, even if nothing targets into that slot, which might allow him to get another Sucker Punch off or a Spirit Break off into potentially something like the Venusaur here. And Charizard's in a difficult situation because it doesn't want to take another Sucker Punch, but then if it goes for the Max Guard, it's going to get that residual damage as well coming through. And, you know, Leonardo might be tempted to bring in the Groudon, but then you get the Solar Powered Chip as well. So, a little bit tricky here for the Charizard. Jonathan going for the Max Guard on the Venusaur, and Venusaur on Leonardo's side going to have its Focus Sash broken as well. G Max Wildfire not being able to find its mark thanks to the Max Guard, and Venusaur on Leonardo's side going straight away for that Earth Power. So, Grimmsnarl has been removed from the field, but I think it's done good work setting up that light screen just protecting Jonathan's Pokemon a little bit more here. Yeah, and detracting a little bit of attention, which gave the room for the Venusaur to, you know, get that, that, that G-Max Vine Lash off, which was useful. And now, you know, you've still got the light screen in effect, which is going to be really useful, especially for your Tornadoes coming in. Um, uh, when it comes into this, uh, the same regard of, of that blast burn damage from the Charizard, because, you know, we have seen how powerful it is, how much damage it can do. But with the light screen kind of supporting Tornadoes, it, it feels like you could probably get a little bit more out of your turns um, and not go down so quickly and making it a bit more difficult for Leonardo to kind of go for that option. Um, the Venusaur is still a bit of a threat though from uh, Leonardo's side of the field because, you know, it has got the speed boost, it has got access to sleep powder and it can really shut that Tornadus down. So it's got to be something that Jonathan is aware of and, and tries to deal with as soon as possible and uh, getting max use out of these tailwind turns is going to be uh, crucial for him. Yeah, even in the face of a sleep powder, getting that tailwind up, allowing your Venusaur to be able to pick up the KO against the opposing Venusaur means you don't have to worry about any sleep here. So you get speed and sleep avoidance. Venusaur is going to fall down though to the heat wave coming out from the opposing Charizard and does a little bit of damage to the opposing Tornadus, but Charizard, ooh, just able to hang on, but of course, <laughs> residual damage is going to be able to clean up that Charizard. Yeah, and it does mean that uh, both players are going to be down to their last <laughs> two Pokemon here. And it's it's most likely on Leonardo's side going to be the Groudon and the Regieleki. And it's, um, you know, we've seen this before from Jonathan where he sets up a, an endgame where he'll probably get his, his rain, the Drizzle ability overwritten by the Groudon because it's a slow Pokemon in this situation. But you've still got access to the Heat Wave from the Tornadus. And now with that light screen support, it makes taking attacks from that Regieleki a lot, a lot easier going into this next one. I mean, this is where things get very, very intensely. Both our players are down to their last two remaining Pokemon, and Leonardo is one game away from being able to take the champion title. Jonathan, however, has got those two Pokemon that have been so great for him, being able to kind of counteract the threats from Leonardo's side, particularly with the speed advances that Jonathan has got thanks to that Tailwind. Regieleki is going to go for the Protect, though, as Tornadus does go for the Heat Wave in the Sun. Of course, going to have that Fire Move boosted up and does manage to connect down onto the opposing Groudon. Does a decent chunk of damage, of course, taking some recoil thanks to the Life Orb. And Kyogre able to go for that Water Spout with its full HP as well that's able to utilize, making this very, very powerful. And even in the Sun, finds its mark on the opposing Groudon, leaving just Regieleki to face down against these two remaining Pokemon for Jonathan. And as you mentioned, Lee, the Light Screen is still going to be in effect as well. Grimmsnarl's carrying light clay, that gives extra longevity to those defensive supports. Yeah, and it's all well and good that you have Electro Web on the, on the Regieleki, but you might be able to take the Tornadus down with that Magnet Boost, but you're not going to be taking the, the Kyogre down. And with the residual damage now in effect as well, kind of chipping away, and with something like Water Spout or Origin Pulse coming out, it's just going to be too much for the Regieleki to deal with. And you can see there that the Heat Wave is just enough. And Jonathan mm -hmm. tying this set back up, uh, you know, in phenomenal fashion. I mean, this is, this is what we love to see. This is how we want it to go down. We have gone through Players' Cup and there have been so many competitors. In the end. Yeah, I mean, all four of us commentators have been able to analyze this matchup between these two players at some point today. And Lee, I think the last thing to do is jump into the very final game of this Pokemon Players' Cup 3 tournament. Let's find out who our VGC champion is going to be between Jonathan and Leonardo. Leonardo is going to lead out strongly once again with Venusaur and Charizard. This is his tried and tested lead. Jonathan has not brought out the Grimmsnarl, instead Incineroar and the Thun um, Tornadus. Yeah, so reverting back to, to a lead that he's kind of used uh, already in this set that maybe didn't work out too well from last time, but still got options here. It's whether or not you allow the Tornadoes to kind of go down for free or not, because, you know, the one thing that you can do here is, is utilize the Faker on the Incineroar if you do 
uh, if you are scared of the, the Venusaur going for the um, for the sleep powder, uh, it's it's very difficult. It's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to get the tailwind <laughs> up, or do you want to preserve the tornadoes for the next turn and then utilize that parting shot onto the the Charizard, which is always a good option to reduce the power there. Yeah, certainly the question of the day. Which option do you want to go down, whether it's your Incineroar, your Venusaur, your Charizard? What's going to be the pick? And Leonardo is going to jump out into this last match with the Gigantamax Charizard once again, able to apply good pressure to both the Thunderous and... Um, sorry, the Tornadoes. I keep saying Thunderous for some reason in this match. And the Incineroar as well. And we know that it can pick up a really big KO against that Incineroar with the Max Airstream. But Tornadoes is going to have something to say about it, first of all, going for that Tailwind and boosting up the speed on Jonathan's side of the field. Parting shot, Jonathan going back to that tried and tested strategy that worked so well for him able to catch the passing shot onto that opposing charizard bringing a special attack down by one stage yeah but the one drawback about this play is it's all well and good getting that that uh, stat drop onto the charizard on the special attack and its attack but the problem is with the tailwind going up the incineral is in a unfamiliar situation where it's going to be going out before the attack goes off normally incineral will go out last allowing whatever comes in to get in undamaged but in this situation you're having to switch something in here uh, where it could potentially take a lot of damage and put him at a little bit of a disadvantage but then again if Leonardo decides to go after the the tornadoes again it's a free switch in it's exactly what Leonardo's decided to do going for that max airstream down into the opposing tornadoes of course Venusaur coming in it could have taken the damage from that but it is sort of running that Cobra Berry could have survived out the turn there um, and then maybe giving Jonathan a few utility options but now he's got that Venusaur out on the field I wonder if Jonathan's going to make a switch yeah and the, the one plus about that play obviously was it meant that the Tornadoes was able to survive that turn from the Charizard where before it has went down which means he can preserve that Tailwind for later on which is so imperative for him executing his game plan uh, makes it a little bit more difficult uh, for Leonardo to kind of deal with it in the late game has to keep in mind that that is there but again getting the Airstream onto the Regieleki puts him in a nice spot where he doesn't have to worry too much about a potential Tailwind right now because the Regieleki is so far out in front because of just how ridiculous fast it is yeah and Incineroar joining the field here you know it can come back in a little bit safer it doesn't want to it doesn't mind taking the wildfire for example and we now know that any airstream coming in its way it's going to be able to survive thanks to the drop that parting shot gave that Charizard but Jonathan to no surprises gigantamaxing up the Venusaur here again going to be able to apply some good pressure with that residual damage with the vine lash and Regieleki isn't going to want to take one of those at all and Regieleki not protecting going for Electro Repair really trying to play the speed games here on this game five and lowering the speed of both the Incineroar and the Venusaur as well and those of course will stay in effect even when Tailwind is over. GMAX Wildfire going to connect down into that Venusaur able to survive thanks to the drop but still does such a significant amount of damage and that could come in critical a little bit later on particularly with those residual effects coming into play. Venusaur however of course going to retaliate with some residual effects of his very own with that GMAX Vine Lash and Paul Regieleki is going to have to take the full brunt of that attack and be KO'd straight away by it. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's a nice turn here for Jonathan to get rid of that Regieleki now because it gives you so much more protection later on in this game when that Tornadoes that we know is in the back and the potential Kyogre that can come in and not have to worry about that threatening electric type that Leonardo's utilized so well throughout these games. Now, the problem is, do you bring in the Groudon here? Probably not because you bring in the Groudon, you're giving the Venusaur an extra turn because the Chlorophyll is going to activate the Tailwind in effect. And even though you've got the Airstream on the Charizard right now, you're still going to be out Bed and puts your ground on in a, 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 a bit of an awkward position but you know you've still got the, the incineral to, to utilize potentially fake out into the ground on slot or try for another parting shot into the Charizard here because that would be so beneficial going forward in this match for Jonathan if he can get another parting shot off you know he's got the tailwind up he doesn't need to worry about parting shot he can go for the max guard play like he likes to do like we've seen him do and mm -hmm. get just reduce the power of that Charizard a little bit more um, and potentially you know prevent any more speed boosts coming out because the Charizard could opt for a max airstream into you know the Venusaur slot it's more likely that you go after the Incineroar slot here but I mean the reducing of the power for the Charizard is probably mm -hmm. a bit more beneficial at this stage of the game 
Yeah, no, you're right here. It's about the moves and the counter moves in this game. Jonathan needs to do what he needs in order to be able to win out that aim game. And whether it's playing defensively for now, trying to get that critical passing shot down so that Charizard's not a threat later on, could be the strategy to go for here. But Leonardo just going to make a switch. And no, um, Max Guard instead is going to be the Max Flare catching the Venusaur on the switch in. Amazing dramatic play there from Jonathan, bringing it right down to its focus sash. Charizard is going to retaliate with that Max Airstream, however, so constantly boosting up the speed. And Incineroar, unfortunately, not going to be able to survive that attack. So although Venusaur does come in for Leonardo here and does take a huge amount of damage, it does get that speed boost up. And depending um, if there's any kind of protective play that Leonardo can do here, might be able to try and stall out those Tailwind turns. But we know that the Venusaur on Leonardo's side does not carry Protect. No, and that's going to be a really easy target from this next turn, especially, you know, if you if you do decide to bring in something like the Kyogre here, dictate the weather. You always By doing that, though, you've always got to worry about the Groudon coming in from Leonardo's side, but, you know, it's going to take so much damage in the process here, but the fact that, you know, Jonathan's still got Tailwind in effect puts him in a little bit more of an advantage situation than he would be without that. Um, do you bring in Tornadoes here? Potentially, but, you know, it, it, it's probably better to kind of preserve the Tornadoes. And, I mean, you could even bring in the Kyogre here, um, um, and just go for just a double protect to preserve the, the Tailwind ending, not take advantage of it to get the Tornadus in for free. But we are seeing the Tornadus hit the field for Jonathan. Yeah, Tornadus here on the action as the Gigantamax turns end for the Charizard on Leonardo's side. Venusaur, of course, still has got a move to make here, and this is where things can get interesting for Jonathan. Yeah, and with the Chlor you know, the sun up on the field, the Venusaur is going to be outspeeding everything. So it's got kind of a pick. Do you go after the Charizard or do you go after the Venusaur? Like you've mentioned, Lou, the Venusaur we know doesn't have a Protect, so it's an easy target here. And then do you just go for the Protect of your own on your Tornadus to kind of out wait out these Tailwind turns so you can set it up the next turn and get your Kyogre in a phenomenal spot against the Groudon and the Charizard left? Because you've already seen, even if the sun does end up going up, you, you've seen the damage that the, uh, the, the Kyogre can mm -hmm. do. And at the same time, the Tornadus can take advantage of the sun we've already seen with those Heat Wage, which makes it very difficult to kind of get around that combination. Oh, it's coming down to the last second here. Can Jonathan lock it in in time? I'm not too sure. It went right down to zero there. Oh, not going to see any switches as Venusaur does go for the Weather Ball, however, in the sun. Going to be targeting down into that um, five type move into the opposing Tornadus and picking up the solid KO there against Tornadus. Venusaur, however, going to go for the G-Max Vine Lash down into the Venusaur. Like you said, Lee, very easy target. We know it's not able to protect and, you know, even if it's switched, then again, a free target for that Venusaur to aim its vines into. Charizard, however, going to be able to pick up a KO with the Heat Wave that's able to connect and in such a dramatic turn of events, Jonathan is down to just one remaining Pokemon. Yeah, but it is that Kyogre, and you know if you're going to have one Pokemon left in your arsenal, then it's going to be the Kyogre. Mm -hmm. You're going to pick that one to come in um, against the Charizard and the the, 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 yeah, the Groudon here that we know that Leonardo's got. The one thing that you would say that kind of falls in favor for Jonathan is that he was so late in setting up those G-Max Vine Lashes that that's going to be enough. If you can protect just even one turn, two turns, that Charizard is going to be taken down. And you've got to consider that maybe the solar power plus the residual damage is probably enough to get the Charizard here. We do see the rain come out from the Kyogre, but we know it's going to be overwritten by the slog ground mm -hmm. on Leonardo's side of the field. Yeah, that's the thing. In the Weather Wars, something we've kind of talked about consistently throughout this tournament, it looks like the victor too. I think nobody's surprised is going to be Sun. That's what we're going to end out Players' Cup on with the Sun being in the sky. But whether or not this Kyogre has a way to be able to pick up KOs against these Pokemon are yet to be told. Tailwind has, of course, ended. And if you're Jonathan, you might want to go for this Protect on the Kyogre, as he is doing, to just try and get that additional residual damage onto both the Charizard and the opposing Groudon as well. Because if you are going to be going for those water... Oh, Ooh, I was going to say, if you're going for those water type moves, you need them to be able to pick up a KO, but Groudon has got something to say about it. Going for that Swords Dance, because Leonardo wants to be able to try and take this Kyogre down in the next turn. and wants to be able to connect one move from that Groudon and just pick up the match. I mean, Charizard's gone down now. It's Groudon versus Kyogre, Lee. Yeah, it's, it, this comes down to it. The, the battle of these Restricteds is here. But I think Leonardo doing everything right here, you know? Um, taking the opportunity to know that the, the Kyogre is probably likely to protect there, so really maximizing what he's getting out of this turn and putting himself in a position where the Precipice Blades, if it hits, is guaranteed to knock out the Kyogre. It's all about this Groudon surviving. Oh which it my can't, goodness! It can't survive. Oh. A single tug of water spout in the sun. Groudon going down, unfortunately, and Kyogre victorious, Lou.
that is phenomenal from the Kyogre, meaning that Jonathan Evans is your Pokemon Players Cup 3 champion. Huge congratulations there to Jonathan and well done to Kyogre as well. Got to give big credits to that amazing pick from Jonathan. Phenomenal. I am shaking at the end of that. <laughs> amazing. Well done to Jonathan. Well done.